Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I want to talk about the new Rad Power Bikes Rad Kick, an e-bike that was just launched yesterday, but that is a bigger deal than I think a lot of people realize. Now I don't have one of these bikes yet, I don't think anyone does, it's not going to be shipping until next month, that's why I'm sitting on my mom's Rad Trike here. But this is actually a really pivotal moment for Rad Power Bikes, and that's why I want to talk about this. Now even without having my hands on the bike yet, I did write a news article yesterday on Electrek about the launch, about this new bike, and I want to talk about not just the bike itself, you know, we're going to go over the specs and why this bike is so interesting to me, but I want to talk about what this means for the company, because I think this represents a big shift for Rad Power Bikes, and I want to discuss what that means for consumers in the North American market. But first, let's go over the specs, because I know everyone wants to know, you know, how far, how fast, how much, all those questions. So, Rad Kick, the newest bike from Rad Power Bikes. This is a very commuter-friendly, sort of metro-style bike, but it's designed to be super budget-friendly. It starts at either $1,199 or $1,399, depending which model you get. The seven-speed version, it's $1,199. The belt drive version, which to me is the really interesting one, that's $1,399. So both of these mark a super low entry point, sort of a new entry-level model for Rad Power Bikes. Now, while the bike is a little more minimalist to get to those price points, it still offers a lot of good features. It's got a torque sensor, which is great for pedal assist. It means you're gonna get much smoother, much natural feeling pedal assist. Of course, it's still got that right side half twist throttle for those that don't wanna have to pedal or want another option for if you're tired and you want that throttle to get back home. It's got hydraulic disc brakes. It comes with included rear rack and fender set, which you know used to rad would charge for those as you know up charges, so it's nice to see those included. It also has a suspension fork, which Rad's former low-cost uh, metro-style bike, the Rad Mission, did not come with. Now, it is a little bit lower performance than some of Rad's more high-end bikes. It's only got a 20 mile per hour top speed, so it's not a class 3 e-bike. Uh, it only has a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery. So, you know, pretty small battery, probably help them bring that price down. They say it's good for up to 35 miles of range. Of course, that's the pedal assist range. If you're going throttle only, you're not gonna get that far. It is Rad's new Safe Shield battery though, which is a really impressive piece of tech. It's basically surrounded by potting material. It's like an epoxy resin that encapsulates those cells and makes it virtually fireproof. Though the battery is, of course, UL listed, so you don't have to worry about those concerns anyway. And lastly, it's got a 500 watt motor, so a little bit lower than the 750 watt motors we've seen in Rad's more powerful bikes. So all in all, a really impressive bike, especially for that price. You know, $1,199 for that seven speed, that is a great price. Though personally, I really like that belt drive option. With that belt drive, even though it's a single speed, you're getting a lot of benefit from it being a maintenance-free solution. You know, it never needs oiling, it never needs tuning, it's never gonna rust on you. It's not going to squeak. It's going to last longer than chains in the long term. So just a lot of big advantages for that belt drive if you're okay with a single speed. You know, if you live in a super hilly area, you might want that chain so that you can run through those seven speeds and, you know, drop it into really low gear, that sort of thing. All right, so that's the new Rad Kick. That's the bike, the specs, everything. That's what we're looking at. But what I really want to talk about today is what this means for the company, because there's more to this than just a new bike launch. Let's talk about Rad for a second. Those of you who don't know, Rad has been a powerhouse in the e-bike industry in North America for basically as long as there's been an e-bike industry in North America. Rad was long the biggest company in the US for e-bikes. They were the ones that were really there in the pivotal moments of getting the movement going, getting people on e-bikes, making e-bikes affordable. And that was really Rad's bread and butter from the beginning was building e-bikes that the average person could afford. You know, these weren't $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $10,000 electric bikes. I'm looking at you, Stromer. I don't care how Swiss your bikes are. $10,000 is too much for an e-bike. So Rad was always really like the $1,500 e-bike company. You know, they had different models. The prices ranged just a little bit, but $1,500 for many years was kind of like their baseline. That was what they sold their bikes for. But over the years, we started to see some changes from Rad, right? You know, around the pandemic times, uh, three or four years ago, we started to see Rad look at a little bit higher end bikes. You know, they came out with their Plus line. They started rolling out the Rad Rover Plus, the Rad City Plus, and these were a little bit fancier bikes, a little bit more expensive. Prices started to push up into like the, you know, $1,800, $1,900 price range. And around this time was when Rad was really starting to see more competition from the budget entry-level newcomers to the market. <clears throat> Electric. <clears throat> 
Sorry, I had a electric e-bikes in my throat there. So, you know, you had these new companies coming in, they had really low prices, you know, $800 for a, a pretty good, decent level, gonna get you where you're going e-bike. And suddenly Rad started doing nicer and nicer bikes. And I think that this represented a real shift for the company. As they started rolling out those $1,800, $1,900 bikes, it was like, all right, so Rad's getting a little fancier, but you know, they've still got their, their bread and butter bikes, their, you know, original Rad Rovers, the, the Rad Runner, that kind of thing that, that's been a low, uh, a low budget entry level model, the Rad Mission, which they came out with for like uh, $900, $1,000, you know, great, uh, simple, minimalist e-bike, that sort of thing. But in just the last couple of years, we've seen new models come out from Rad that are even higher priced. You know, we've seen them come out with the, uh, the Rad Runner 3 Plus, right? I wrote about this last year. When it first came out, it launched at, I think, $2,499, $2,500. I wrote about this on Electrek and was just like, come on, guys. I mean, great e-bike, right? You know, just objectively really nicely designed. But $2,500, who's going to spend that much for a Rad? You know, Rad's whole cachet comes with them being a budget, uh, you know, e-bikes for everybody kind of company. Within like a day, Rad updated the price. You know, they didn't put it on sale. They just like changed the MSRP and like, okay, you know, a couple hundred dollars off. Never mind, false start, guys. I'm not saying that was because of me. You know, a lot of people balked at that that price when the bike first came out. But that was sort of the the, the first sign that like, you know, what's going on at Rad with these prices? We've also seen other expensive launches. This bike, the Rad Trike, this thing came out at, at like $2,500. Great e-bike. Again, a really nicely designed electric trike. They did things differently than other companies. If you guys remember, I did a whole e-trike comparison video where my mom tried four different trikes. I told her whichever one she liked the most I'd get for her. This is, this is her trike. She chose the Rad Trike. And it makes sense when you compare everything, you know, bike to bike, when money's not an issue because your son's buying you a bike, then you, you choose the nicest bike. But for most people, their son's not getting them an e-bike, so money is an issue. And when Rad was charging $1,000 more than some of the competitors, it's hard for a lot of people in these markets, especially you know electric trikes where the market is largely uh, older folks, fixed income, that sort of thing, to say like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna get a nicer model and spend $1,000. There's just not as many of those customers out there. And so over the last few years, we've seen that really impact Rad. Now, I don't have any you know insider information on their exact sales figures, but from what I can see, they've significantly dropped in sales over the last few years. Now that's not to say that other companies haven't as well. The whole e-bike industry coming out of the post-pandemic boom has been hurting. But Rad, you know, more than a lot of other companies has suffered as people, you know, hold back their wallets a little bit, tighten their belts at the same time that Rad is pushing out these higher end, nicer e-bikes. Now I understand Rad's strategy. You know, when those other e-bike companies are coming in, undercutting their prices, Rad said, we don't wanna, you know, join this race to the bottom. We wanna build nicer e-bikes that people are gonna say, all right, I'll spend a little bit more and get something a bit nicer. So I get it, but it just, it didn't seem to land in the market, especially when you've got the even nicer bike companies, you know, the Trex, the Specialized, these kinds of companies doing their own entry level model bikes that are coming in close to the price of Rads. So they're falling in this in-between where, you know, they're, they're better than the cheap bikes, but they're costing closer to the affordable, really nice bikes. And I think that really impacted Rad sales. You know, we've seen they've gone through round after round of layoffs. The company used to be over a thousand employees and it has shrunk significantly since then. They used to have a customer service team that just that team was bigger than all of the staff of several of the next in line biggest e-bike companies. So it's fair to say that they've been hurting over the last few years. But if you ask me, I think that the launch of this new Rad Kick bike is sort of a course correction for the company. Now surely they're not gonna make as much profit on this as they make on some of their nicer higher end bikes, but I think they're gonna start selling a lot more of these. The Rad Kick is the quintessential Rad bike. It's, it's what you know the CEO, Mike Radenbaugh, for years had said that he got out there to democratize e-bikes, to make them affordable for everyone and to get everyone on an e-bike. And that is the type of bike that can do it. The Rad Kick, you know, $1,200, $1,400. Yeah, objectively, that's a lot of money, but in the e-bike industry, it's, it's just not that much money, unfortunately. There are so many expensive bikes out there that $1,200, $1,400 is a really good price for a bike that gets you good performance and comes from a company that is known for, you know, not cheaping out on things, you know, for, for going a little bit further, for developing their own designs. Things like that safe shield battery, you know, incorporating torque sensors, that sort of thing. 
for getting better parts and for a long time having better customer service. Now, Brad has had issues with customer service as many companies have in the last few years, but I think we all know that Rad has a long reputation for serving their customers. And so I'm not worried about that in the long term. And I think the company has taken steps over the past year to work on correcting some of those customer service issues. But to me right now, looking at this new Radkick launch, this is incredibly promising for me. For someone who is brand agnostic, you know, I'm not in the pocket of any e-bike company. I recommend any e-bike that I think is a good value and a good bike, regardless of who makes it. But as someone who's always been a fan of Rad Power bikes and recognizes that this company started with the goal of making e-bikes affordable for everyone, I'm glad to see Rad sort of returning to its roots and bringing back an e-bike for the masses. It's great to see those really nice, you know, Rad Runner 3 Plus amazing e-bike, but not everyone wants to spend $2,200, $2,300 on an e-bike. So to see a really good $1,200 e-bike from Rad is just a really nice return to form to the company, in my opinion. Now, of course, all of this is before I've had a chance to actually test the new Rad Kick. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of these bikes soon so I can do a full review for you guys. Make sure to be on the lookout for that over on Electrek where I do most of my e-bike reviews. But if the bike is anything like all the other Rads I've tried in the past, then I have high hopes for it. Now it is time for my favorite part of all of my videos, that is the e-bikes for good segment. This is a program I started a little over a year ago to give away a free e-bike to one of my viewers at the end of every one of my videos to someone who is low income or they need a a leg up in life, they need a way to get around, a form of transportation, maybe a way to get back into fitness. Basically, an e-bike would really improve their life, but they just can't afford one themselves. If that sounds like you, then listen up. I want you to head on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. The address is down here at the bottom of the screen. This is my website. There's nothing to sign up for. You don't have to pay anything. It's just a form. Uh, you fill out, let me know what your situation is, how an e-bike would really help improve your life, and hopefully you will be the randomly selected deserving entrant announced at the end of my next video to win a free electric bike. Now it is time to make someone's day by announcing the winner of the e-bike for my last video. And that randomly selected entrant is... Andrew L. So congratulations, I'm really excited to get that e-bike out to you and anybody else who an e-bike would really help improve your life, give you that means of transportation you need, but you just can't afford it, let me know. Go on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood, fill out the form, and hopefully I can hook you up with a free e-bike. Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter who will win a free copy of one of my books is... Radio Tests. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below this video, you can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.